Welcome to New Jersey HorrorCon and the amazing Women in Horror panel. Before we waste any time, let's get these guests out on stage. The amazing Tiffany Sheffis and Serena Vincent. Make some noise. Thanks for coming. Yeah. You guys are the most beautiful crowd in the world, or at least the showboat. Yeah, or the world. Or the world, I think we'll go, so. We'll go yeah. with worldwide. Guys, thank you so much for being here. It's such an honor to have you. Um, I'm going to kick it off a couple questions, and as soon as I see hands going up out there, I'll start calling them out there. Um, so uh, one thing I want to talk about is we're finally at a time where we're starting to see women in various film genres get the respect and opportunities they deserve, but women have been ruling the horror world for decades. So I was wondering why you guys each think the world kind of needed horror films to pave the way, and what women in horror have inspired each of you along the way. Wow. Loaded question. Yeah, yeah sorry. I just like got background. right into the deep. Yeah. Um, well, I will just say for me personally, what horror um, did for me as an actress and as a woman is um, I want to say my first like leading role where I carried a film was horror. Um, so, uh, and the, the business is weird, like, right, you, it's one of those things where nobody believes you can do something until you've done it. So no one believes that you can carry a film or whatever, that you're funny, if you're not cast. And it's like credit, you can't get a credit card until you have credit, but how are you supposed to get a credit card if you, no one will give you, you no one? No one will give you the credit. Yeah. So um, the horror genre, just being like in Cabin Fever, for example. Um, allowed me to, uh, you know, proved that I'm decent. And then after that, got some oh really, God, you know. Well, it just is not. And then, I, and then it got me other, like, bigger roles in, in um, or more, you know, leading roles in other horror movies, which then helped me get leading roles in non-horror movies. Anyway, so that's how it helped me personally. Awesome, but, very cool. Yeah. And, and I think it's it's the same thing though. But I mean, with and I don't know if, if it's. I used to always think it was just horror movie women or horror movie people that got kind of labeled and, and stuck in a box. But it's really not. It's it's actors in general. It's right. you know I, I see it with friends of mine who have TV shows and they go, oh, well, we can't cast that person because they're the the drama guy. And it's like, well, but no, I've seen them in funny stuff. It's like, no, no, they're the drama guy. And I've gotten it for years with, oh, but you're just a scream queen. It's like, well, just a scream queen. Like, you know what? I made your bad movie funny. I made your bad movie sometimes scary. You know, so it's hot. like... Hot. You made your bad movie hot. Hot. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, but it, it, it is difficult, you know, that kind of... Uh, to, to do the crossover. Like, even within the genre. Like, let alone going from horror stuff to more mainstream stuff. But nowadays because all of you guys are awesome, and I know some of you are like the OG horror fans, like horror is such a big thing now. Like I was actually cracking up at it the other day, like at uh, Universal, and it was like, this is everywhere. Like it is such yeah. a mainstream thing now. And it wasn't like, I want like, I don't know, 15 years ago, um, I was attached and we were pitching a horror TV show and nobody wanted it. And now look at, Oh, I yeah, yeah, we were the same. Yeah. We had Robert yeah. England. All of you know good old Robert. I had him attached to a show called Camp Scream with Comedy Central, <gasps> and he was a crazy camp counselor, and we were going to bring on all these contestants. They're like, oh, there's fuck. just not enough horror fans. <gasps> what? Oh, my God, you got to go back out with should, that. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. my God. If I get Robert attached, yeah. no, maybe. Comedy Central just moved down a rung for Down me. a notch, A couple of rungs, man. probably. But, like, I mean, as far as the... the like heroines in horror films. I mean, we've always been there. You know, they're always have been around. And you know, think way back to like the the badass babes of Hammer films. Like oh, yeah. even if you were the siren, they were often still the ones driving the force. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamie Lee. Oh yeah. Like there's just there's so many awesome like female heroines in the genre, which is why I think so many of you guys dig it. Like, yeah, it's kind of awesome sometimes to see the the damsel in distress, but most of you really like the badass babe. Definitely. Definitely. They're so, nodding, yes, yes, nodding. yes, you're nodding. So ri riffing on that, um, I was curious for each of you, what ingredients go into a great screen uh, heroine and horror? Wow. Uh, I'm stumping see, you guys I have, here. I have a kid in the audience, so my, I know. my typical <laughs> bad mouth. Um, 
No, oh, you can't hear me. All right, good. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If I uh, first of all, yes. I mean, I at least for me, in in my day of making lots and lots of straight to VHS crap when we still had blockbuster videos, was an awesome scream, some boobs, and uh, and honestly, like the ability to to bring some levity to a a weird moment in a horror film is what like all the kind of scream queen stuff that I always like grew up totally yeah. watching. And and I you said it earlier, but there is a um, maybe there isn't a level of comedy in all horror. Sure. But in a lot of them there is. And that's a that's like a I feel like as an actor you need to be able to walk that line of sexy, funny, scared, frightened, all of those things. Yeah. The quadruple threat yeah, of horror. Right, yeah. <laughs> Pretend be able to act with, you know, a piece of tape that's supposed to be a monster. Yeah. 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 Watch the terrible Sharknado 2 that I was in. That shark that attacked me so realistically. A tennis was ball. Was not there. It's a tennis <laughs> ball that somebody threw in the air and they were like, oh yeah, you thought there'd be a tennis ball. There's really not. There's not even that. The shark's there. I was like, damn, can you make him a big shark? That's how that worked. That's awesome. awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah, that is super cool. Um, so, guys, anyone in the audience out there want to be warming up for questions yet? If not, it's fine by me. I have plenty here. I just want to give you guys your shot. So, um, it takes a little while. Friday panels, it takes a little while for the rooms okay. to warm up. Don't Do you want me to tell it. you how to win Subway Surfer? No. I think she's really... Uh, I'm glad she didn't say yes, because... Uh, <laughs> maybe Serena knows. I have never heard of it in my life, yeah. Hey, you in is the that, back, Is Steve, that a video? You've got a question. Oh, hey, okay. Actually, I have another Stand one. Stand up. I think he might be a little shy right now. He's not I'll shy. Do it. Yeah. I asked you all the questions I had. But you don't. You didn't ask Serena Vincent all the questions you have. I did ask Serena questions. You did. That's okay. I can go for another okay. one. Okay. Um, all right. I was actually curious. We're finally starting to see a humongous emergence of female directors kind of taking Hollywood by storm right now. And I was curious which women behind the lens that you each admire in horror or just in film in general. Wow. I'm mean, stumping. I didn't know I had I'm to come prepared. Yeah, for yeah that. No, no, we didn't yeah, even know we had a panel. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we study. Um, wow. I don't. I have not yet had the pleasure to be hired by too many female horror directors. Um, I've had a few. Uh, Debbie Rashawn, horror actress. A lot of you guys know her. I was in her directorial debut called Model, Model Hunger. Super weird movie starring Lynn Lowry. Uh, from the crazies, who's awesome. Uh, so seeing seeing a lot of the the women that like I've worked with like throughout the years now actually kind of going behind the camera is really really exciting. Um, I know Daniel Harris is doing a lot of stuff. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll direct something. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Do it. That's actually yeah. be a one man Serena Vincent special. <laughs> so you have to be funny, scared, scared shocked, shocked, all of it, all of those things. Yeah. That's yeah. All those things. yeah. Pretty cool. Well, that actually brings me and to And look good in a tank top. Yes. Yeah. Yes, necessity and screen. Yeah. Well, actually, you already answered this, I guess, but uh, Serena, would you ever consider directing in the future? Um, yeah, I think f I, I, I would. It's not... Um, well, I'm, I write. I wrote a book series um, 10 years ago now, which is totally crazy that that time flew. What's it called? They're, um, they're Girlfriend to Girlfriend Advice Books. It has nothing to do with horror, but... Um, it's um, advice you'd give your best friend. So, and we redefine the term hot chick to be not about hot, looking hot, but about an inner confidence and a beauty and like, a, it was like a sisterhood. Uh, we created like a sisterhood. So there was how to eat like a hot chick, how to love like a hot chick and live like a hot chick. So, um, so like writing has been my second sort of passion. And so, uh, M m more so than thinking about directing, I'm thinking of like, I mean, I've been working on a Disney show, I've been thinking about, I really need to get back into to all of these films and books I have in my head, I need to get them out of my brain and into my computer. <laughs> awesome. Fans are waiting. Do that, guys. Yeah. Buy it for your girlfriend. Yeah, you can get them on friend. Amazon. Yeah. Tomorrow. Do it. Very I co wrote cool. with my best friend, Jody Lipper. Yeah. Is anybody warming up yet? Just a little bit? All right, I can keep going. Um, oh, so, a question right here. Oh, we have one. Oh, awesome. 
I just wanted to know, um, out of all the movies and stuff like that that you have seen or either been in or whatever, who is your biggest, more or less, fan? Who, who do you idolize? Who are we a fan of, of, of who we've worked with? Either worked with or... Or just watch. Seen. For me, um, I had the honor and pleasure of doing a short film called Dark and Room, um, directed and written by David Lynch. And so it was so cool. And I was like young, -er. (laughs) and I I wish I could redo that now and be able to articulate how much it meant to me to work with him. You know, I don't know that I did that then. Um, but it was amazing. He, he, it was an extraordinary experience I'll never forget. So I am a huge David Lynch fan, and that was really cool. That's huge, and I didn't know that, and that's awesome. And can we Little see nugget? the short? Yeah, it's somewhere? called Darkened Room. They, he released them on DVD, like on a compilation. He did like, there's like 10 or 12 of his shorts wow. on on something yeah or you can probably yeah the closest i've got to david lynch was i did a little movie which oddly enough uh, it was me and ed furlong it was called dark real and yes. the director is a guy named josh eisenstadt josh eisenstadt is the like legit number one david lynch fan so much he started the david lynch film festival which oh. like is somewhere and i guess a lot of people go to it and it's huge and uh at his wedding we, my husband and I were guests at it, and all of our table was people from Twin Peaks. Stop it. Super weird to be like, holy shit. I'm looking at my husband like, that's the fucking log lady. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's amazing. So that, that I, am, I as well, big David Lynch fan, and that was a very weird, surreal, surreal night. Like, my husband and I just the whole night, like, this is so strange. <laughs> And they played, like, weird David Lynch music to dance to, so we're all, like, in the red room. It's very bizarre. Fun. <laughs> that must have been so cool. I, keep, cool. I, I don't know why it is. I always forget that David Lynch even did Twin Peaks because it seems, like, so strange that he would do TV. You know what I mean? Did but, you see uh, the, you the did latest? Again? I didn't see the new I didn't see the new episodes. It's crazy. I have to get cable back yeah. for that. Yeah. No? It's amazing. It's not uh, yo, cable. Yeah. 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 It's cable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah you do. Like, no, you yeah, don't. You do. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I was like, no, I'll just give you my password. No, yeah, you have to get cable. Okay, well, we'll talk later. Um, so <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit about um, what you guys each want to see kind of in the future for women in horror and like how you'd like to see kind of the roles evolve or the genre, you know, or things that you maybe haven't seen, you know, women do in horror films yet that you'd like to see them do more of. Hmm. I, I mean, I feel like we're, we're pretty close to there i mean like there's a lot of really really cool movies coming out a lot of great female parts a lot of cool parts for cool kids like hereditary mm-hmm. uh, i mean a quiet place wasn't really i mean the mom had a she, she had a badass part in a quiet place i didn't see it oh, it's um, scary. I, I agree with you that that i feel like we're doing it and sure. i love like I'm a huge Stranger Things fan. Like I love that that um, Millie Bobby like, Brown. Yeah, and I yeah I love that like '80s sci-fi horror is is mainstream, and we're you know we can, we're watching it on television. I, I love so I I agree. I think that we're doing it, and I I feel like in horror, with there there really aren't any limits, and there there never really has been. And so that will just um, continue. And like, I I don't have a problem with like the um, how should I? Say? I don't know. I, I can't th- articulate what I'm thinking. Let me say it this way. I was just at Disneyland, and they redid Pirates of the Caribbean to where um, there's not the line of like prostitutes. I don't know if you've ever been on that ride, but there's like the line of, and, the, and there's like the pirates like betting and like and one guy says, I want the redhead. And they changed all of that to make it more appropriate. And so now the women are chasing the men. I'm like, oh, that's funny. But I like how you, like I liked how it was. Like we don't need, I don't have a problem with, with the, the, it's fake. This is, it's Disneyland, you know. So, um, 
yeah, it's not something that uh, affected you mentally, like, oh, that's how women are supposed to yeah, be seen. Yeah, like, that's a bit, yeah. It's, a, it's a ride in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, like, right, fine. yeah. So, I, I, like, I love this whole Me Too movement, all of that, but, like, I don't think that there is any, I don't think that anything that happened in horror was wrong, and I think we're progressing, and it's on their way, and we don't need to yeah. change anything. We don't have to go back and re-edit movies, no. basically. No. Yeah. And, Very well and I think on, you know, uh, all of that and... You know, all of us, like, if you look at your group of friends, you have every different type in there, you know? I mean, at least I do. I have the stupid one is probably me. Like, you know, you have the crazy one. You have, you know, the shy one. I mean, and that's, I think, what makes horror movies awesome is that, yes, there's often, like, these kind of crazy stereotypes. But more than not, they're pretty true to life, you know? The, I never thought about that. That's The awesome. wild, so crazy true. one, yeah. the shy, the yeah. jock, the geek, yeah. the, 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 the town s- slut. The slutty one, yeah. <laughs> I heard, like the town slut. Yeah, it's town very old timey yeah. of me, like that harlot. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, and that—that's that, why I think we all all like. I mean, these kind of these kind of movies are very much John Hughes, you know, with with some blood thrown in. Like we all can find somebody to associate with. You can just um, help me figure out why I love horror. That's for sure. <laughs> John yeah. Hughes with blood and gore. I'm like, yeah, that sounds right. like a perfect yes. Friday night to me. <laughs> um, awesome. So another one I wanted to ask, um, how important is it to each of you guys to uh, maintain your accessibility to the fans by like doing conventions and stuff like that? Do you feel like that's kind of your way of giving back, help keeping the horror world alive and well and stuff? Uh, I have done this show since the first day New Jersey Horror Con decided they were going to have a show. That's right. So 100%, it's not because I have all types of new movies that I need to show you guys. It's just because I, I just love being here like I love as a horror fan at heart like I know Serena loves like horror movies too like to just even be able to talk to people about oh wow you liked that so did I oh that's awesome oh that's a cool t-shirt like I love that like it's just like being with friends like there's no fan part to it you know yeah I think that like it's a um a a community um I I agree like I've, I've I've been doing conventions for a really long time and um it started off for just the horror conventions, and then people found out I rem- remembered that I was a Power Ranger, and so I do some of the Comic Cons too sometimes. But there's like this community of like this is like a weird little world that we're in here in the showboat, but it's awesome, and we're all here for the same reasons. And we do this um, like it's a gift to be able to see that something that we worked hard on is appreciated, and it's a gift. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be here. It's kind of the most amazing thing in the world when you've made a movie and you, you know, you, you busted your butt on it. But at the end of the day, I'm like, well, my job's not that hard. Like a lot of you guys have hard jobs, you know, yeah. I, my job's pretty easy. But to see that something that we made and then I see somebody has a tattoo of it on their body or wearing the T-shirt on their back or spent money on the, the merch for the pop figure or whatever it is. It's like, holy crap. Like, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. It's so that, that makes my daydream of being a banker kind of wash away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anybody warming up, guys? Anyone out there? Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I was the yellow Power Ranger. I'm Power Ranger's Lost Galaxy. Like your t-shirt. The best one. Maya the yellow Power Ranger. Yes, way. Yeah. The most yeah. powerful ranger. Yeah. Most powerful also, do you watch ranger. Disney Channel? Do you watch Stuck in the Middle on, the, on Disney Channel? I'm the mom. What? Mind blown! <laughs> oh! I'm sorry. Now you're stuck in the middle of that game. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, okay. You're Still the ahead. worst mom ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ruined everything. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, so another one I want to ask. Being that you guys are so iconic to the genre, do you find it important to keep setting goals for yourselves? And at this point, what kind of goals could you possibly be setting? Oh, wow. Wake up tomorrow. <laughs> Try to eat an apple. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I, I, I have lots. Well, this is interesting. Okay, we can have lots of goals. And, like, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. At the end of the day, in this business, we don't have lots of control um you know you can go in and audition for something and that can be your goal to be on that show and it is not up to you 
So, oh no. <laughs> so, um, I have like a lot of dream. I don't know. I think it's important to have lofty goals and and dreams, and then be happy where you're at in every moment, and that is the path to manifesting what you ultimately want. But then some things come out of the blue, and like being on a Disney show. Well, I never thought that was going to happen. Everybody said you'd never be on a Disney show after you've been a scream queen and taking your clothes off in movies and all of those things. And so you never, you just, you just never know. You'd have lofty goals and you see where your path takes you. Very That's awesome. cool. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the same here. You know, you just kind of keep trying to, to do my job in every movie that I'm in or, you know, show up and hang out with you guys or, uh, you know, I, I still always trying to learn things. Um, but at the end of the day, especially with the acting gig, like no matter how good you are or how great you are or how many auditions you go on, sometimes it's just not up to you. Yeah. I have a really awesome example. I uh, got an audition the other day for uh, a TV show called The Haves and the Have Nots uh, on Owen's Tyler Perry show. And I was like super excited because oh, I, think, I think his shows are really awesome and fun and, and like somewhat inspirational to a lot of people. And I was like, yes, and I go in there and I, I play a lot of security guards. I play a lot of cops. And this was for a security guard. And I was like, got this shit, nailing this, walk in, only one other person going up for the job against me, Chaz Bono. <laughs> I was like, well, clearly no. they don't know what they are looking oh, for. <laughs> but my, the, the, the lesson in this was, was that it doesn't matter because like at the end of the day, like if there's like a writer or a director behind it and they're not sure, it's like, well, let's just see all different types of people. So even if you thought, wow, man, my read was the best, but it's like, no, we really don't want a brunette. We want a dude or we want, you know, a blonde, a blonde. Um, and that's, that's a, a rough, <laughs> rough one to deal with. Yeah. Wow. That's um, so I was curious what, uh, for each of you, what your proudest on screen moment is. I am the king of the stump today. Yeah. Really Again, we didn't even know we had a panel. Okay. Know, like, I do prepare apologize. for one. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, I've got one. Uh, so I, I did a movie a couple years ago. Some of you that actually like my stuff have seen it. It was called uh, originally called The Prometheus Project, and they retitled it The Frankenstein Syndrome. Um, Thanks. Uh, and it uh, was where I play a molecular biologist and uh, we develop, a, a, we're doing illegal stem cell research and we develop a serum that brings the dead back to life. Run, run, run. It's, you know, has repercussions, right? So like a modern telling of Frankenstein, but the director initially didn't want to use a scream queen. And I was like, bitch, you are going to use me. So I went, I met with him, it was like a whole deal. I like, I went on and on about how like, and I do, this is a very weird kind of thing. Some of you that know me know this about me. I, I retain medical knowledge like with a weird sick sense. Like I, wow. I just, and so I was like, look, I will spew out this like I know it, like I've been to med school. That is not easy. Yada, yada, yada. He gave me the part reluctantly. Uh, we ended up winning a ton of awards by it and it played on, on HBO and Showtime for a long time. Um, but. But being able to kind of master that knowledge of something that I really am somewhat passionate about and do what, like you were saying, it's like kind of the, oh, you'll never be on a Disney show. It's like, oh, yeah, you'll never play this part that generally is for, like, you know, a more mainstream heroine kind of actress. Like, I was pretty proud of that. That's <gasps> awesome. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then I married the director later. Ah! Oh, oh wow. it was so, like, divine. Yeah, we hated each other on set, too. And then we married each other. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. That's amazing. Very Guy cool. who didn't want to use me. Yeah. No, he did all along. Yeah, he doesn't know how he wanted to. All the songs. Want to use it a different way. Yeah, he want to use it otherwise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> similarly, um, I don't know. I always feel like my proudest moment is like the thing I'm doing now, you know? But. Um, Smart. But um, this is, was not a horror movie, it was a romantic comedy called Everybody Wants to Be Italian. And I got the, and I am Italian, and I got the script, and I thought, oh my god, I have to, same, I have to be in this movie. Like, I have to book this job. And so I did. Nice. But, like, that doesn't, you know, you, you have these feelings a lot as an actor, right. and they don't happen. So that was, like, one of my proudest, like, wow, I really, like, I really did that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. It's cute. Pretty cool. 
Um, so now you guys have two movies to watch tonight: yeah. right. Frankenstein Homework. Syndrome and Who Wants to Be Italian. Got it, Steve? 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 <laughs> Present. Thank you. Oh, what's up? Oh, yeah. What would be fun with DVRs? Uh, right now, a uh, shameless plug, Mayans MC on FX, Tuesday nights, 10 o'clock. Are you on Mayans? No, my husband writes it. <gasps> oh, he does? Awesome. Oh, that's so, amazing. So uh, if we get a second season, maybe. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, oh. But yeah, so Mayans MC, watch that. That's on our DVR. Um, probably some Sharknados because... Because, because you us. should, yeah. I was in one of them, but I think we still have those on there from, I don't know, something. All gold, by the so way. I just <laughs> finished watching. We just finished watching the Ozarks. Oh my God, have you seen it? Loved it. You have it's to watch awesome. season one and season two. You have to. You have to. You have to. It's so okay. good. Barry, have you seen that? Yeah. Oh yes, we're watching so, Barry. Oh, so good. Yes, yeah. Barry is weird. That yeah. is a weird show. And at first two episodes, I was like, I'm not sure. And now we are. It's into especially it. exciting just be, as being an actor yes. too. I feel like yeah. yeah. It's, if you um, don't know anything about it, it's it's a guy who's basically like a, a killer who then becomes an actor. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Yeah, watch it. Watch it. Uh, we watched Mandy the other night. Has anyone seen Mandy? No. Nick Cage movie, mm. right? Do you guys know? No one yeah. knows nope. It's nope. basically ringing a bell. Though. Super weird. Weirdest movie I've ever seen in my entire life. Wow. Like, I really mean just watch it because you'd be like, what the fuck did I just watch? Okay. Mandy. Mandy. I think I check that out. Okay. Um, so, actually, I actually had a question for Tiffany. Um, being that we're in New Jersey, I want to talk a little bit about your work with Troma, if that's okay. Um, obviously, Troma means a lot to horror fans, but now it's interesting. Troma is kind of getting an added level of respect, you know, for being, you know, indie film pioneers. And I was curious, how much did you learn working for Troma, and how satisfying is it to see people still hold it in such high regard? Well, I mean, it's it's weird because I think it's like any any cult thing. Uh, it takes many years before it gets like the status and recognition it totally. deserves, right? Yeah. Um, and Troma certainly deserves that they've been around, you know, forever. Um, longest running independent film company around, period. Um, one of the biggest libraries, I think, of any film company around, oh, like be, thousands yeah. and thousands of movies. Yeah. But for me, uh, just getting my start in Tromeo and Juliet, being so young, auditioning for to be an extra in a movie and getting like an actual part, just beyond my wildest dreams of, of a weird career start from being just like a horror fan to kind of being immersed in, in, in that world. Um, but what you learn from them is because it really is like a one-stop shop film school is the minute you do a job for them, then they're like, you know, it's like kind of like old studio days where it's like, you did a picture with us. Now we're going to take you on the road. It was the same thing. But with Lloyd, it was like, now we're going to go to Cannes and then we're going to go to the Fangoria convention. Now we're going to go here. And it was like, promote. And you had to learn instantly. It, not that I was ever shy, but like you just kind of got thrown into to, the promotion. Yeah, to fire. like stand up and like just kind of talk. And it got me to to stint jobs hosting on the E Channel. Um, I hosted for Playboy after that because of Lloyd being no, no, no. Tiffany needs to speak, even though I wasn't anyone. Anyone really needed to hear talk at that time. So it's just the the lessons with with in regards to promotion and. Uh, I guess public speaking is <laughs> some ways valuable. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah, you guys are killing wow. it today. Um, <laughs> that's amazing. You know, I didn't, you know, that's, I mean, it's funny, just riffing on that. Tromeo and Juliet is, I think, the only movie that I can absolutely remember seeing the trailer for the first time. It's like how amazing that movie was. I was like, wow. It's really cool. I mean, any of you here haven't seen it, it was uh, James Gunn's first movie, went yep. on to Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, it was my first movie. A lot of people who went on to do really cool big stuff started on this film, and it was uh, basically batshit crazy Shakespeare. So Romeo and Juliet on some massive drugs, <laughs> like punk rock version. Oh, yeah. It's very, oh, very cool. Oh, you haven't cool. seen it? Oh, no, I haven't it. seen uh, it. Yeah. I just oh. went to them. It actually, they, they had a like exhibit at, at, at the Museum of Modern Art. Like It's really like held in fairly high regard very, as far as very like, high weird regard. cinema. It played in New York City it. for two years straight. Wow. It's a, That's weird. Yeah. It, Time so very classic. cool to be a part of that and like is still to this day one of the, the things that I get asked to sign the most of. Sure. Probably because there's so much trauma merchandise out there. But. Oh. And just because people wow. love it, you know. Yeah. Um, so speaking of classics and franchises and stuff, um, Serena, despite being a newer franchise, Cabin Fever was already remade in 2016. I know. So I was curious if you are you more like are you flattered to be in something that was like 
you know, deemed worthy of a Hollywood reboot, or are you kind of more annoyed that someone came in and messed with? Right. You well, know? we're shooting this, so you're shooting my answer, right? <laughs> so you're filming. Yes, this will so, be on YouTube. So at first, I was like, no, uh, that makes me feel old. It's not like it hasn't been long enough to remake it. Right. Then my first instinct was like, wow, that's that's crazy, and then. Um, I, I saw the film, and I just, I, okay, let me say it this way. Cabin Fever was a really special movie because it was Eli Ross' first movie, and at all of us, including Jimmy and DeBello, who's here today, and Jordan Ladden, J Joey Kern, we were all, and Ryder Strong, we all really like bonded on that, this, the film, and I feel like part of the magic of Cabin Fever was our chem natural chemistry and this natural bond. We had a great director, obviously. Um, um, we spent a lot of time together, like, it, like after, you know, off hours before and after work. And um, it was like this, there was magic that happened on that film. We didn't think anybody would ever see it. Like, we didn't even know what we were making. And then the world loved it. It was like this perfect recipe of, Everybody being genuine and authentic and giving their best, and it and and of, of course Eli and 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 um and um it, the world loved it and it felt really good. Awesome. So I don't really think you can recreate that. Yeah, it's and, very. And it, and I and I feel like they use the same scripts and it it felt like I know as an actor and I don't know if you feel this way. There's a there's a rule as an actor, like if you do. Um, if you watch someone else do something and then you, you, you try to do it, you'll, you'll seek to repeat their performance. And then you're not being an authentic actor if you're seeking to repeat somebody else's performance and those, their words. And that's what I saw when I saw it. I, I, di I didn't feel like, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to no, talk shit, but that's, how, that's my honest answer. No, I appreciate that. Very candid. I didn't see the remake, but I, I do know, I remember watching Cabin Fever for the first time with, you know, a big group of people, probably like all of you did. And, and what I remember seeing out of it was is exactly what Serena just said, was that, holy crap, finally, you know, we have characters that all of us get, like yeah. that you kind of can love, the ones you can hate, like you just, you, you kind of fell in love with that group. And so therefore you actually gave a shit that something happened to them, while at the same time cheering because like the gore and stuff was really cool. But Thank you. I find that that would be hard to repeat, yeah. you know. But on the flip side, I am like a fan of the remake because often it does bring some <clears throat> light to something that may have been forgotten. Now, Cabin Fever wasn't that long ago, but it, it I mean, having children of my own that go, there was a Halloween before, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that they would have no idea if these remakes or these new yeah. reimaginings weren't out there. I so. totally agree. If it's got to be done right, I totally yes, yeah. yes. Absolutely, very cool. Um, so, unless there's anyone out there, questions? Okay. Um, I was curious. Um, other than seeing each other, of course, and meeting your adoring fans, who are you guys really excited to see here at New Jersey Horror Con? Other than seeing Tiffany Shepard. Other than seeing each other, of course. Okay, girl. Um, well, I have to say, I'm going to talk about you because we're here together. I never knew you for like, I don't know, 10 years. Everyone yeah, was like, time. do you know Tiffany Shepard? Da, 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 Tiffany Shepard, da, da, you and Tiffany Shepard, da, 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 you remind me of her. Da, da. And, and I was like, who? No, I don't, I don't, you know. And I, then I get I, the same thing. And then I, I finally think. meet you and you're amazing. <laughs> and I, I was very excited to know that you were going to be here because it is rare that there's a lot of batshit crazy actresses out there. A lot. And, and it, that's super annoying. And it gives those of us who aren't batshit crazy a bad rap. Yes. And it makes it where you're like, oh, man, I've got to be on a panel with who? Or I've got to do this with so-and-so. But, like, this was the same thing. For years, I would have people come up to me and be like, oh, my God, like, have you met Serena Vincent? You guys would get along so well. Like, <laughs> have you met her? Like, you've met her, right? Like, and I'm like, no, I haven't. Like, I don't know. It's weird. Sometimes you just don't meet people. Like, fuck, I don't know. And then to the point where I was like, maybe I'll hate her if she's too much like me. Right. <laughs> Which is yeah. usually how it goes. Yeah. But yeah, then yeah. we, we yeah. did uh, Tales of Halloween mm -hmm. together, but not in, in any of the same segments. And we did a signing together. I'm like, I'm in love with Serena Vincent. I felt uh, same <laughs> like, I thing. I remember I posted a picture and I was like, I get it, all of you. I get it. I love her too. Uh, but I, uh, you know who I've not ever met? I've never met uh, Cassandra Peterson. 
Oh, wow. And well, in 20 some odd years of doing shows, never met her. I mean, she's been at shows with me, but I've always been like, that's weird. Like, I'm just going to walk up and be like, oh, you want to meet me? <laughs> like, so I, I may do it this year. I may I may fangirl out. And oh, you got it. Go yeah, meet yeah, Elvira. Oh, wait, that's time. It's and time I time think, you know, she might fangirl back at you guys yeah, a little bit I because, I mean, if she was still hosting, you know, shows and stuff like that, I guarantee sure. your guys' films would have yeah, been featured on there. Absolutely. absolutely. No doubt. Um, so before we wrap it up, guys, I want to give you guys a chance to, um, you know, plug what you have upcoming, you know, any appearances, upcoming projects. Where can, uh, where can your fans catch you guys next? I am uh, have a movie coming out in a couple weeks called Killer Kate. And uh, we really try our Fun. best to kill Kate. So watch that. It's pretty cool. It's hitting some theaters out here and in L.A. and then just watch it on VOD. Um, and a movie called Texas Cotton, which is not a horror movie at all, but you'll see so many horror movie faces in it. Tons of dudes from The Walking Dead, Lou Temple, good old George it. Hardy from Troll 2. If you haven't seen him, you need to watch him. And he does talk like this. Anyway, it's a weird like cop who done it movie that I thought was a comedy when I made it, but it's not, I guess. It's a drama. So uh, watch that just for why not. Cool. Wait, what was the name of that one? Texas Cotton. Texas Cotton. Texas Cotton. Um, well, you can catch reruns of my show Stuck in the Middle on the Disney Channel. Yes. <laughs> I did three seasons. I think it's over now, sadly, but... That's okay, because now I can do other things. I have a movie that just came out called The Work Wife, which is a, I play a crazy psycho. It's like um, um, Fatal Attraction, but without the sex. It's like meant to be on Lifetime. So that's on Amazon and iTunes now. You can find that. And um, doing lots more, con a few more conventions this year that I'll post on Instagram. And then tell everybody that you want her back at the spring show for New Jersey Heart. That's right. That's right, yeah. Make sure we get both these ladies back. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's about all time we have, but make a round of applause for these amazing ladies. Thank you. Thank you, guys.